Setting up an open VPN server with Android clients and connecting to pre-configured Wi-Fi channels on your Android device. All that and more this time on Hack 5. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen and it's your weekly dose of Technolust and here we are back in studio. I'm hanging out with Greg. How you doing, Greg? And uh, Shin's going to be joining us a little later in the program. but. First and foremost, I wanted to thank everybody that emailed me and supported uh, me through Hack Across Europe. That was so much fun. And one of the things that I talked about during Hack Across Europe, part of you know uh, best practices of hacker travel, really, you know, your encrypted laptops, your encrypted phone, your you know uh, VPNs and SSH tunnels, and all of those things that you should just be actually doing anyway, whether or not you're going through uh, crazy borders. The um, I got so much feedback about this, and I can't believe it. We we touched on, oh my gosh, this is like going back to season one. Seven years ago, we set up a point-to-point -point tunneling protocol um, VPN using, gosh, Windows XP. And at the time, it was MSCHAP1 was uh, totally broken, so use MSCHAP V2. It's the authentication protocol that uh, makes PPTP so easy to use. And I used a virtual private server to do a little pop top action and get a, uh, a VPN set up very quick and easily, which is great because then you can do your encrypted tunneled traffic over your phone. I mostly like PPTP for its simplicity and ubiquity. Basically, any device under the sun is going to support point to point tunneling protocol. However, it's not without its caveats. Thank you uh, to Micah and everybody else that emailed me. I can't believe I missed this at DEF CON 20. Probably just for the reason that we were just running around like crazy at DEF CON 20. I don't know how I missed this one. But Moxie, you guys know Moxie as well as David Holton both um, demonstrated a awesome uh, kick-ass addition to their cloud cracking service. Check this out. The, uh, the Cloud Cracker blog talking about cracking MSCHAP version 2 with a 100% success rate. And this is really awesome because David Holton, uh, if you're not familiar with his company, he does a bunch of like FPGA stuff and using his Pico computing project, basically able to uh, crack a, um, a MSCHAP v2 uh, handshake in you know no time at all. And in fact, They've published uh, the open source uh, Chap Crack application. It's over here on GitHub, on Moxie's GitHub. So you can go ahead and start using that today. Or it's even integrated with CloudCracker. If you haven't played around with cloudcracker.com, basically you can upload a hash and have it broken here. It supports NTNLM, WPA, SHA, MD5, and now MS Chap version 2. The exact authentication mechanism that I was using on my phone's VPN. Wonderful. Ah, I feel horrible for not having uh, been aware of this and for even recommending such a thing. Although it was very easy to set up, I can't recommend it now because it's broken, obviously. Uh, and one of the reasons, in fact, the only reason really that I even prefer to use something as simple as PPTP was. Uh, well, simply the fact that it's ubiquitous. It's You can find it on iOS devices, on Android devices. Hell, you could probably set it up on a BlackBerry. And that's nice. Uh, previously, I know that we've talked about setting up VPNs with um, one of my favorites is OpenVPN uh, because it's open source. And the only caveat there is at the time, there was no real easy way to set it up on a mobile phone, on like an Android device without rooting it. And while rooting is awesome, don't get me wrong, ROMs are cool and all of that, I'm not always necessarily keen on installing a bin file from Bob's ROM farm. I, I don't know who Bob is, nor do I know Cyanogen. Then again, I'm sure he's a great guy. Um, at some point, you have to trust your vendor. And in this case, I'm using Samsung. However, uh, I was looking for something where I wouldn't have to root. And turns out times have changed, especially since uh, 4.1 of Android. And now you can do an open VPN uh, without needing root. So that is what we're going to do. We're going to set it up today. Uh, we're going to be putting together OpenVPN, which is an awesome, awesome project. Uh, and we've talked about ways to do it with a DTO before. Um, but now what we're going to do is set one up, 
with Untangle. And so here's the thing. Untangle is awesome software. One, it's made in the Bay Area, so representing. Uh, two, they're sponsoring Hack 5 with open source, so just going to throw that out there right now. However, if you go back to Season 7 before they ever knew Hack 5 existed, you'll know that uh, we were setting up homebrew servers with their software. So I'm one, stoked that they're supporting Hack 5 now, and two, stoked that I can use this in a way that is just in perfect context with the kind of stuff that we're doing right now, focusing on you know, making sure we're secure when we're crossing borders, or even if you're not doing crazy international travel, you should be setting this up. So I run a um, Untangle server at home as my gateway, pr pretty much, um, and we're going to follow through how to set this up because it's a breeze and I'm doing it all in a virtual machine because actually I did this as well like we'll get into this later but uh, using like Tails virtual machine and then different virtual machines to create an internal network on your own machine awesome awesome well we're gonna do it now in VirtualBox because you guys know I love VirtualBox and yes yes I know I'm in Windows I'm <laughs> using my Sony again because I'm doing some uh, artwork and such with the photoshops and the illustrators and stuff so Anyway, uh, it, the same thing will be Windows, Mac, or Linux because we're just using open source stuff here. It's awesome. It's Oracle's VirtualBox. And basically, I've already got a Untangle server set up here, but it's just like creating any other server. You know, you click new and choose the ISO and all of that. But uh, the one thing that you're going to want to make sure that you set up when you install Untangle as a virtual machine is that you're going to need two network cards. I mean obviously, you know, for any router you're going to need, you know, your network card for the internal and the external interface. And so typically when you set up a virtual box machine, it's only going to have one of those NICs. We are going to set up a second and that's going to allow us to have fun traffic rowdy action on an internal virtual network. How cool is that? So just head over to settings and then under network uh, your adapter one is already in there, and I've uh, left it at bridged, which means it's going to go ahead and use my wireless card here and get an IP address from the network that I'm currently on, and that will be our external network. And adapter two is internet or internal network. And what you want to do is make sure you're mindful here of the MAC addresses. I've already opened up uh, advanced is where you can find the MAC address here. And this one ends in 2C, that's my internal, whereas the other one ends in C0, so that's my external. So all of that is already set up, so let's go ahead and start the install. Now, I've already gone ahead and uh, plugged in the uh, mounted the CD-ROM, the ISO file here, and uh, put it on the hard disk. It's, it's a next, next finish kind of thing. But this is the setup. It's really simple. We're just going to go next. We're going to give it a password, something horrible and temporary. And we just need to make sure that we have the proper network card selected. So the external, it wants to be uh, the MAC address ending in C0. I can come back into settings and make sure that's my bridged LAN network. And C0. So yes, it is the correct one. Just that's the only real tricky part. But as you see, easy enough to just look at the MAC and know which one is which. You can swap them if you need to. And we'll go next. And it's just going to go ahead and figure out the internet connection. In this case, I'm using DHCP because it's really the, the internet connection that it's getting is just what my laptop has. And my laptop's just connected to the wireless here at the Hack 5 studio. Uh, but it would probably be the same if you were, say, uh, you know, connecting it straight up to a cable modem or a DSL modem or whatever have you. And that's how it's set up at my house. And now we get to choose what kind of network we're running as. This is what I run at home is just as a router, but you can also set it up as a transparent bridge if you'd like. If you already have a router and things of that nature, you can just kind of pop this box in the middle and have it do its thing. And finally, we can specify how we want to do upgrades. I'm going to tell this not to automatically update for right now. I normally would, but I just want to do this as a quick demo so we're not going to apply any updates. And we're welcome to untangle, and we can actually, if we'd like to, uh, install some recommended applications, get ourselves a package. I'm not as interested in that right now because I just want to demo one of the free applications, but they do have those packages there. I'm going to go under 
Uh, oh, and under config, you can change all of the settings that you might already imagine as far as your networking and administration of your router. You know, we can set up port forwards here and set up our interfaces. And if we are running a DNS server and host names and things of that nature, um, Pretty basic stuff that you would find on just about any router, but what makes Untangle really powerful is just the ability to have um, applications. And very much like you know your Android and iOS and whatnot, we have an app store. So I'm going to head over to that. And I'm just going to scroll down here to the VPN. You'll see that there's an IPsec VPN. But what I'd like to do is install the Open VPN. And this is a free app, so I just click download free app. And I already have an account here. Now as this installs, I should point out that we've talked about setting up OpenVPN in the past. We've used Adito, we've used different distributions of it. What I really like here about Untangle is if you're already going to use it as a router or as a bridge, uh, it's really nice to have it just right there in your stack. They do a really great job of setting up the clients and the distribution. So I'll show you that now. So what happens now that I've got this application is it just shows up here in my, well, like like a DJ rack or something, like a 19-inch like a rack mount gear kind of stuff. And I just go into settings. And by default, everything is, is pretty easy to configure. Basically, we set it up as a VPN server here, not a client, but we could set it up as a client to go from, you know, one uh, branch office to another office or something like that. And we set up our certificates. And in this case, we just give it things like the organization, where we are. I'm going to say California, San Francisco. And we can choose which network we're going to give ourselves access to. And we can set up really cool routes if we'd like to. But basically, what this is going to do is give me access to the internal network and that's most of the time what you want when you're setting up a VPN. So next, and finish. So that's it as far as setup is concerned. You can go through these tabs and see you've got a, a connection event log of uh, you know what's come and gone. You can go through um, and choose different networks that you want to actually export to those hosts and see the status of it, who's connected, and things of that nature. But we just want to go ahead and add our first client under the Clients tab. Click Add, and give it a name. And I'm just going to say Darren, or I'm going to be more official and say D Kitchen. That'll be fun. And the default address pool, which we've already seen. And there we go. So the only thing left to do here is to distribute this client. So we'll click Apply. And now we can distribute the client. And here you can see we can download the installer for Windows or we can configure it for other OSs. And see, this is the really nice thing about OpenVPN as opposed to like PPTP or IPsec is that there are clients for you know Windows, Mac, Linux, Linux uh, now in this case, Android. I'm sure there's one for iOS somewhere. And it's really nice to be able to just take this file which has all of the certificates and everything you knew. We've talked about public key encryption before with SSH, same kind of principle. We take these files, we just put it on that device now and we can connect and it's not you know, as simple as PPTP is with a username and password. So I'm going to go ahead and click download the configuration for all OSs and I'm going to save this file. Okay. You're also going to notice here, if you'd like, you could email this as a link uh, to somebody I could enter in, Darren at hack5.org, and uh, send the email over to myself. But what I'd like to do is very securely uh, send myself uh, all of this, this package, basically, to my phone. So here's what we're going to do now. I'm going to come over to my phone and set up an SSH server. So I just picked the first SSH server I found in the marketplace. Um, I've seen some others like DropBear, so your mileage may vary, but basically any SSH server will do. And I've already set this one up, just named it test, to run on port 4444. And it's pretty cool. Um, I forget the name of this one, but there's if you, if you just check out the uh, Google Play Store for SSH server, you're going to find a ton of these. But this was a free one that allows me to do a shell SFTP and SCP. So that's where this is going to come into play. 
and I've created a user, and as you can see, it mounts as the uh, SD card. So slash storage slash SD card zero. So with my server set up, all I have to do is hit start, and yes. Now I have an SSH server going. If I hit info, you'll see my Wi-Fi IP address is 1073.31.187. So here's what's really cool now about Untangle. See, I'm in this Untangle interface. Join modding wizard Ben Heck and friends as they build and modify a host of amazing community-inspired creations. Be sure to watch new episodes of The Ben Heck Show each week right here at revision3.com slash tbhs. In the latest episode of The Ben Heck Show, Ben continues his work on the ultimate gaming system, combining a PS3, Xbox 360, and a Wii U into one amazing machine. Don't forget to go to element14.com slash tbhs to find out how you can enter to win Ben's ultimate gaming system as well as other builds from the show.